today it's all about the power to max NG Eco power meter. I dig into the tech specs, the installation, and we have a look at a ton of data from rides inside and out. It's quite rare these days to find a brand or a product where the online feedback is almost entirely positive. Favero does come to mind. There's a lot of happy owners out there with the Asioma Unos or Duo Power Meter pedals. And Power to Max is another brand you'll find great reviews on. Now I'm not just talking media or marketing reviews. If you jump into any Power Meter discussion thread, you'll find a happy Power to Max owner or maybe 10. Power to Max is a brand that I'm often asked about when posting Power Meter reviews. And to date, I hadn't put one through the Llama Lab test until this week. And on that note, Let's get into the details. So first up, kicking off with the tech specs, Powdermax produces spider-based power meters for road, mountain bike, gravel, and track, so they have all BCD combinations covered. The unit that I've tested on the bike this week is the Road NG Eco, which I will call the NGCO. NG standing for Next Generation, which is released a few years ago now. Eco, I believe, stands for Economical, because this is a trimmed down version of the NG model on features and on price. Uh, the specific version that I have was a 110 BCD 4 bolt rotor crank compatible version, which I matched with Shimano Durace chain rings, with a claimed weight of the Spider itself, the NGCO, of 158 grams. We will put that to the test. Onto the specifics of this unit, uh, it's a Spider based power meter. The accuracy on the NGCO is plus or minus 2%, which is now up gradable on purchase to plus or minus 1% for 100 euros. Power range between 10 and 3000 watts, we're covered there. Cadence, 30 to 250 RPMs, no magnet required for that, so accelerometer based. The battery on the NGCO is a CR2450 with up to 300 hours battery life and it has battery status LED, so you can check the status of the battery. Wireless protocols, AMP Plus, Bluetooth Smart. Out of the box with the NGCO, you'll get power and cadence. There are data upgrades that you can pay for after purchase, which will give you left, right balance, pedal smoothness for US $59 each. And there's mention of torque, but I couldn't find where to purchase the torque upgrade. Now, given this is a single point of measurement on the Spider, the accuracy of left, right balance and your pedal smoothness may be up to interpretation. It'll give you a good indication, but it won't be anywhere near as accurate as a true left, right to independent power meters, such as a pedal-based power meter or crank arm-based power meters. The unit is well known for its auto zero, and they state that power to max compensates for temperature variations and mechanical zero point shifts, meaning there's no need to perform a zero offset prior to riding. So temperature compensation is tick on that one too. Oval chainring support, yes, according to their website. Warranty, two years on the NGCO out of the box that is also upgradable to five years at the time of purchase for 150 euro. Price-wise, on the NGCO model that I was looking at, 490 euro, 490 US, and around 890 Australian dollars. Remembering you will need a crank set and chain rings to go with that. The difference between the NGCO and the NG fully-fledged model, as you'd expect, the power accuracy plus or minus 1% off the shelf for the NG. NG has a rechargeable battery, all the data features are unlocked on the NG, and five-year warranty. Okay, now to the hands-on with this unit, as we unbox the PowerTomax NG. Specifically, the Power to Max NG Eco version. Serial number, date on the side. We have a manual with some personalized information there for the model, the slope, the date that was checked, and a bit of information here in different languages. Cool, we'll put that aside. Looks all pretty straightforward. And the spider itself. Four bolt, that's gonna take my Shimano rings. On the back here, Ant Plus, Bluetooth, and it has pull out. I won't do that, I'll actually open this compartment up and do it a better way. So there's the battery in there. Okay. A close look at the battery compartment. It's one fat battery. We'll open up the uh, mobile app in a moment and register this. So we'll put that back on. Okay, that's nice and tight. But before we do anything more, we have to put this on the scales. And this specific model comes in at 155 grams. Okay, now, that aside, that to that side, so I can put the mobile phone right here and load up this registration process. 
Once downloaded, the Power to Max app will ask you to register an account. And then once you log in with that, you search for power meters, select the correct one once it's awake. And a few seconds later, you'll get all the information. Now it has detected that there is a firmware upgrade available for this Power to Max NGCO. Change log there for the last few revisions, but we'll kick this off and see how things go. Okay, and after a few minutes or so, things went... Uh, oh. You could say not so well with the iPhone update. So crashing out there, thankfully I had the Galaxy S8, an Android phone, and that performed the update successfully. So all good to go. Switching back over to the iPhone, logging in with the account and connecting to the device which I have now renamed GP Llama Power to Max NGE. Once it connects, we'll get some device information, everything listed there. We can change the settings there. So obviously the name of the unit at the top, auto zero on or off, amp plus on or off. There is calibration factor, which I'm not going to touch. And a few other options there for the configuration of this power meter. Clicking on upgrade, you can see there, there's balance, smoothness and torque to upgrade to. And that's it for the configuration via the app. Okay, now it's time to build this unit and get it onto the bike. So using the Shimano Durace 5339, no skimping on teeth for this one, and simple install with the four bolts. We get those in, we torque them down correctly, and we are left with a beautiful chain set that I think looks pretty neat. Mm -hmm. You have to agree. Okay, now this on the scales with the chain rings coming in at 302 grams with the spider chain rings and bolts. And for the rest of this, we need some crank arms and a spindle. And here's the rotor Aldu, short for Alp Duez, set up, which is a 24 mil spindle. Again, I do like the look of that. All black, not quite stealthy, but does look nice. Onto the scales with the entire crank set system and coming in at 807 grams. Onto the bike, the other crank was already off. No need to change the bottom bracket. Straight in. Non-drive side on. There's the preload adjustment taking place just there. And on go the Asioma Duo as my baseline comparison power meter. Over the last week, the Power to Max NGCO was ridden up hills, it was ridden down hills, it was ridden on virtual hills. It was also ridden very fast away from these swooping birds. Before jumping over to my favorite website on the internet, the DCR Analysis Tool, I'll give you a quick overview of what I'm looking for when comparing power meters both indoors and out. Number one, data transmission quality. Are there any dropouts or spikes in data that are occurring throughout the entire data set? Next up, how's it tracking against a known good baseline? Is it high? Is it low? Is it drifting up and down? which leads me to my next point there, the zero point drift or power drift. Over sustained efforts, does it drift high? Does it drift low compared to the baseline? After sprints or ride pauses, is there a zero offset change? And do I need to stop, zero it, and start again for it to level out? And are these changes, if they are occurring, greater than 10 seconds? Now, power meters will calculate things a little differently. Pedals, cranks, hub, trainer and you'll need to give them a few seconds to stabilize after a change, such as a start-stop or a change in cadence or a change in gear. But if it's any more than 10 seconds, I'll start asking questions. Responsiveness, so is the data overly smooth? Does it miss peak sprint power? How's the consistency? A lot of people say accuracy doesn't matter, it's all about consistency. Well, if you're doing more than one test on a power meter, you can check the consistency. Is it higher than the baseline one day? Is it lower than the next? After a zero offset, high, low, you get the picture. And with a number of data sets, you can get a good handle on the consistency of the unit. 
The last point on my list there is, are there any unexplained observations when using this power meter? It could be anything from a combination of the above or some paranormal activity whilst using this device. Things that make me go, hmm. And after all the testing, I have two questions I need to answer. Does the unit match or maybe exceed the technical specifications as sold? And can I use this power meter as a trusted baseline to compare others to? If the answer to either of those questions is a no, then I go back to the manufacturer with my data sets for review. Now that review can take a week or two, could involve new firmware updates, more testing again, maybe they'll ship a new unit to make sure it wasn't a once-off manufacturing issue. Now this can be a lengthy process, and at any given time I have a number of power meters in the Llama lab test under review. One is seven months and still counting. I'm almost done with that one. But if you've done the quick math on this, I did say I put this on the bike last week, I'm doing the video today, so let's look at the data. Okay, here we are at my favorite website on the internet, the DCR Analyzer Tool, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and be happy to see things like this. Ride number one, outdoors, it was solo, and at the end there where things looked completely chaotic, that was motor pacing a tractor on the way home. So we'll dive into the data for that. First 20 minutes, up against the Asioma Duos. 234, 234, call it done. All looking fantastic there. Tracking against the known good source. Jumping down to the cadence for that section of the ride and all looking pretty good there. There are some stop starts, uh, but other than that, everything was tracking very, very nicely with cadence up against the Asuyama Duos. Back to the power for the second half of the ride and the chaos that was motor pacing a tractor. And you can see there, 239, 240.5, all looking very, very good. And yeah, there's a lot of chaos or noise at the back end there, but the unit did very, very well to track against the Asioma Duos. The only thing that I will pull out is that there's a little spike in data just here, which went under and then over. The average wouldn't be affected because it looked to compensate for that. So something happened there, but that was a once off in hours and hours of data collection. So I'll write that one off for now and I didn't see it in any other data sets. Onto ride number two, out around Wattle Flat here in Ballarat. Nice 90 minute ride through the hills. And here's a harder effort up Longs Hill Road, pushing around 400 near the top there. So again, that's unsmooth, that is one second. And 240 versus 237.9, call it 238. Within two watts of the Asioma Duos there, that's all looking pretty good, well within spec. Drilling down into some data just before a short sprint, the short sprint itself, and just after. We'll have a look at this, and there doesn't appear to be any drifting just after the sprint. The sprint, well, not much of a sprint. It was, what do we have here? 998 on the pedals and 1018 on the power to max. There's another sprint later on, but you can see there, there's no drifting after the sprint, after a hard effort, everything comes back into line. 185, 182, within a few watts. Jumping inside now to the Llama lab test, up against the Elite Doretto XR and the Asuka Maduros and the Ngico. Just riding along before we get stuck into the Llama lab test full. We have 119, 118, 117.9, all within a watt or two. That's no problems at all, given the ups and downs on that. Drilling down into the Llama lab test short for this, I wasn't seeing any drifting whatsoever with this unit, so I skipped on the 10 minutes and switched them back to fives for this, and you can see there the numbers line up very, very well. 233, 232, 231.5, all good. Into the sprint, and as close as you will see, for such a short sprint there. So the Powder Max 1299, the Asiom is 1308, and the Elite Doretto just a few watts under there at 1255. And finally for the Llama lab test with the overs and unders to check the responsiveness of this unit kicking in and out with power reporting, all looking good there too. So 238, 235, 236, average with a lot of overs and unders, looking good indoors too. And the final data set I'll look at here is another outdoor ride, and this was with no zero calibration done prior to the ride on the NGCO. I did it on the Asiomas, the NGCO I just left, and here is a sprint and another little hard section after that. Sprint numbers within a few watts there for the maximum sprint, 1148 versus 1176. Very, very close for that. And afterwards, all is looking well. And as expected for that ride, the mean max power graph, it's one for one for the whole way through. That's what I like to see. The summary from the data review there, the data transmission quality, that was a tick. There was that one two second interval where it did drop and come back and average out. Okay, I'm gonna write that one off because I did not see that in any other data set that I collected throughout the week. Tracking against a good known power meter, tick, that was fine. Zero point drift or power drift during sustained efforts, during sprints or during start stops after auto pause, 
that was fine too. Responsiveness, tick, and any unexplained observations. No, it was all good. So coming back to my two questions, does it match or maybe exceed the specifications as sold? Absolutely, looks like to be well within the plus or minus 2% of accuracy there. And can I use this power meter as a baseline to test other power meters against? Absolutely I can. The downsides, I had to come up with some downsides of this. I think the battery door cover is probably the only downside of this unit. They're $5 each to replace and they're kind of vulnerable, I guess. If you're using this as a gravel bike and you're a bit sketchy with uh, how you ride the trails or go through sticks or something, it can be knocked off. So as a roadie, not an issue, but something to be aware of with that battery cap design. So that's a wrap from me on this one, the Power to Max NG Eco Spider Base Power Meter. It was great to finally install something on the bike that I was happy and confident with from pedal stroke one through to pedal stroke a few thousand down the road. There was nothing I had to question about this unit. It's a rare occurrence these days that I don't need to contact the manufacturer and ask questions. Is it staying on the bike? Well, stay tuned for that one. And as always, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up and to support this channel, hit that join button. It's much appreciated. We'll see you soon.